Happy Thursday, September 14th. It's 2017, and guess what? We're gonna learn some StarCraft, cause it's Let's Learn StarCraft. And today's topic is going to be Terran, Zerg, and Protoss units broken into three videos. This first one is gonna start with Terran. What we're going to do is we're going to walk through every single unit that Terran has and just talk about them. And one of the big things that I wanna focus on is telling you what to focus on. There's something that can be a little overwhelming where when you look at each of the races, there's 13 units that they have available and how should I consider and weigh them against each other? And I almost imagine like a big pie chart in your head of where your brain should be. And for instance, if you're playing Terran vs. Protoss, 95% of your questions should be tanks and vultures. Or excuse me, 95% of your units should be tanks and vultures. And if you're in a new situation, you need to answer all of your questions with how to use tanks and vultures to solve them. That's how you think of it. The other 5% are all the rest of the units in Terran. And this is something that I think is a big hurdle for a lot of people who are new to StarCraft. They just really don't know what to think and which unit is important. Should I be switching what I'm doing? Should I change what I'm doing? And a lot of the time the answer is no. So what I wanna do is go through every single unit and just talk about them. And as we're talking about them, you'll hear me touch a little bit on the matchups here and there, but this is very introductory, this is very basic. So let's go ahead and start things off right away. Mm. Boom. I said boom, damn it. There we go. So, we are going to be focusing, look at me, I just automatically went to go mine. The autopilot is strong. Are we getting any sound? Beautiful. So let's go ahead and talk about the first basic barracks units. Now, many of you know Show Me the Money and Operation Qual, but did you know about Modify the Phase Variants? I know all the cheat codes. It shouldn't have a question mark at the end. Now, the Marine is in many ways a bread and butter unit for Terran. But the weird thing is that it's hardly used in two of the matchups. Against Terran and Protoss, you build hardly any Marines. Oh, gosh, I'm so sorry, I forgot a very important thing that I'm going to do in all of these videos. Because the focus of uh, learning each of these races, learning about their units, because the focus is on the units themselves, I'm going to tell you that these units are super important to understand their core units. There are situational units that are used some, but are not as important as these core units, but you still should probably know a little bit about them. And the third are... Don't even really worry about these kinds of units. Just to help frame everything. So the Marine against Zerg is a core unit. You are building lots and lots and lots of Marines in this matchup, but um, they have some core weaknesses against Zerg, primarily the Lurker. You'll notice that they only have 40 health, which means that two shots from a Lurker kills a Marine, just straight up. So. All the rest of the time against Zerg, Marines are insanely powerful. Like, insane! I actually think that if you're a Zerg, you will find the Marine to be the scariest unit in the entire game because the damage output is just so ridiculous. Like, if you get stim for these Marines, this SCV has 60 health, and if I just stim and shoot this, look at how fast that died. And that was 60 health. <laughs> they deal so much damage. So Zerglings get ripped up by Marines. Mutalisks get ripped up by Marines. Hydralisks get pretty ripped up by Marines. The only thing that Marines really struggle against is Ultralisks and Lurkers. That's it. That's really the only thing that Marines struggle against against a Zerg. So if you're playing against Zerg, you're going to be building a lot of these, and you're going to feel them either rocking the shit out of each engagement, or totally getting murdered and annihilated. And I don't want you to get too discouraged if you get completely overwhelmed and annihilated by Marines, because that's just kind of how the unit works, right? Um, I, I see often a lot of players will get into a fight and they'll lose everything and think they completely screwed up. Not true. Marines are just so freaking fragile. 
that um, they, they're the glass cannons of Terran. I think they're some of the highest damage output, period. So that's a little bit about Marines against Zerg. Also, one of the things that Marines are good against or, or, or good at is just being unbelievably mobile. So doing things like seeing an expansion here and going whoop and then just running right by the expansion up to the main base to abuse a choke is really great. Very, very good at abusing chokes sitting here. You can just imagine lots of Marines being at the top of the choke. Almost impenetrable for virtually any Zerg army. Now, against Protoss, Marines are just really not built. They're just not built. Except for the first six or so. Early game, if you're a Terran player and you're playing against a Protoss player, Marines are a nice, well-rounded thing that are okay against Dragoons. They're okay against Zealots. They're nice to put in a bunker at your expansion. But really, against Protoss, you're never building more than six Marines. It's a very specific number. Some builds have two. Some builds have four. The ones that do early attacks have six, and that's it. The reason that Marines are not built against Protoss is that one Reaver Shot destroys the shit out of these. One High Templar Storm destroys the shit out of these. And guess what? Just regular old Dragoons really are quite good against Marines. So, against Protoss players, <laughs> just use these as a stepping stone unit, right? Against Zerg, these are core units. Against Protoss, they're just sort of like a situational unit used just at the start. You will occasionally see people do big medic marine cheeses against Protoss. But that's a cheese build. That's a cheese surprise non-stable build. The reason it's unstable is the instant the Protoss gets a reaver or two, everything fucking dies. So that's how to think of the marine in those two matchups. You know what? I'm actually not going to put on this cheat code. Now that the computer is attacking me, let me just show you a little bit about why Marines are hard. Everything kills them super quickly. Alright, so now I gotta build a bunch of Marines. The computer ruining my day. <laughs> just so you know, whenever you're fiddling or testing, you're gonna do all of it just on a regular old map in single player using cheat codes. It's like what everybody does. So the last thing to note, what about Marines in Terran vs. Terran? Not built. Occasionally you will see like two Marines built at the start because often players will scout each other in Terran vs. Terran with a barracks and it's nice to just have one Marine that's able to shoot that floating barracks. That's it. Vultures kick Marines ass. Tanks kick Marines asses, man. So quick review of the Marine, one of the most important units that exist in Terran. These are essential core units against Zerg. One of the most important things um, to understand how they feel and how they function against Zerg. Occasionally you'll build six or so early game against Protoss. You'll never really build more than two against Terran. And that's the Marine. That's really the Marine. Um, I think the big things that you will feel as you're playing with the Marine is understanding when is a good time to fight and not. That is the biggest skill to have with Marines. Um, and there's Marine Micro and there's a separate video that I'll be making about specifically Marine Micro. But just as a unit in the game, the biggest thing I want you to be aware of is I'm against Zerg. Am I choosing good fights or not? And the Marines will tell you. They'll die real damn fast. Firebat is a unit um, that we don't actually need to spend that much time discussing. Uh, Marines actually deal pretty solid damage, a base of 6 damage, and that's full damage to everything. Firebats deal 16 damage, which is as much as a Zealot. Um, but it's a special type of damage in StarCraft called Concussive, which means it deals a lot of damage to small units like Zerglings and Zealots uh, and other Marines. It'll deal the full 16 damage. But against anything armored, or heavy, it deals 25%. So for instance, this barracks, notice has 970 health. 
I attack once, it's at 964 health. It only took 25% damage from this fire bat. So, fire bats are not built against Protoss. They are not built against uh, Terran. And against Zerg, 95% of the time against Zerg, you're building just like two, and that's it. You're really not building this unit. This is a very niche unit. The only time we ever see fire bats built in significant numbers is if a Zerg player is building a lot of defilers, Zerglings, and you, the Terran, have a lot of different angles that you can come in at. Because then, you can imagine if there's lurkers here, you can stim in. You can stim in and attack from two different angles. Surround, and even if the Dark Swarm goes up, you have so many fire bats there shooting that you wind up beating them. But we don't even see fire bats built in large numbers against Zerg that often. Largely because chokes negate any advantage fire bats would have against lurkers coming in from angles. So again, the fire bat is a pretty simple unit to understand. Don't build it, or sometimes like to. Now the medic is an interesting unit. Um, I think the important things to note are if we're not really building marines or fire bats against Protoss and Terran, we're only really building marines and fire bats against Zerg, Medics are pretty damn tied to how many Marines you're actually building. A good ratio is like 1 to 4 Marines to Medics. That's just, that's just a good rule of thumb. Sometimes you'll... Uh... Here's the thing. There's a lot of build orders that are constructed around timings. So like, once you get two production cycles worth of Medics you can attack now. And it's less about the precise ratio. But I wanna I wanna just throw that ratio out of like four to one, five to one ish. Just so you have something to start with. Two to one, three to one is kinda a few too many medics. You're not dealing enough damage and your uh, medics are just dying. Where does it hurt? But medics work very obviously, right? You you stim the marines when you don't have cheat codes on, you stim the marines, and the medics run around trying to heal them. And they heal pretty damn fast. I want you just to look at the amount of health that's healed. I'm going to stim once. That's 10 health being healed per thing. Let's actually stim down to 0 health. And I want you to see that this actually heals pretty damn quickly. So that's why you don't really need that many. The main thing that you really use medics for is not to keep your whole army at full health, not to keep them topped off. The main reason is that you'll have two dudes at the front who are constantly taking damage. I'm, I'm just tapping stim. So this is 10 damage, 10 damage, 10 damage, 10 damage. This is really what medics are used for is making sure that you have the guys taking damage never, ever, ever die. And that's why you don't really need that many medics. So other things of note, pretty much everyone thinks about the medic as the healer. There's also restoration, which removes negative debuffs from a unit. For instance, if you have a science vessel that is plagued, you can use restoration to remove the plague. Never used. Never period. It isn't used. Don't worry about it. Optical flare sets a unit's vision to one. So for instance, here is a marine that has healthy vision. You can see his optometrist is great. He can see whatever. Optic flare. Oh, are we serious? Optical flare 75. No. So this marine is now blinded. This is its vision. This virtually never used virtually never used there is there is essentially two uses that i have ever seen in the last 20 years of playing this game and they're both garbage okay one of them is i can scan i can use a scanner sweep and if i see an observer i blind the observer <laughs> okay there there's one a uh player called up magic once upon a time did that a few times um 
And then he got accused of match fixing, and his career was ended forever, and he can never play professional games again. But there's an, there's, there's an excuse for Optic Flare. The other one is if you're getting Reaver dropped, you can often Optic Flare the shuttle, and this will shut down um, the shuttle. Don't do this ever! Are you kidding me? Because many of you are like, well, wait, if I unload my Reaver from the shuttle, can't it see again? The answer is yes. Yes, it can. Yes, you're completely correct. So basically, the medic is just used to heal uh, the Marines. Important to note, medics begin with one armor and have 60 health. Marines start with no armor and have 40 health. So it's good to have medics kind of at the front of an army if there are a lot of Zerglings there. But even then, that's relatively uh, small, and will be reviewed more in the uh, micro-focus video. Are we serious with this shit right now? Are we serious with this computer wrecking my shit right now? You know what? You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna go ahead and scan, and there's the observer! I blinded it. Can't see nothing now. There it is. Ah, yes, the power overwhelming cheat code. How I wish there was a test map. I almost want to turn off power rolling just so you can see truly how bad Marines are against Storm. I mean, they die so fast, dude. Alright, we're, get, we're getting the hell out of here, man. Okay. Last basic unit that we're going to look at, last barracks unit, is the Ghost. Ghosts, um, the cloak ability, essentially never used by itself. You'll never see a ghost. Actually, let me just take a big step back. Ghosts are one of the most rarely built units for Terran, period. The reason that it's so rarely built is that Lockdown works only against mechanical units, and every single unit in Zerg is biological, so doesn't do anything against Zerg. Um, against Terran and Protoss, there is... Rarely big targets you'd like to lock down. I mean, look at the cost of a ghost. It's 25 75 75 gas, that's about as much gas as a tank. And are you really going to want to lock down a tank? Wouldn't you rather just have a tank? You know what I mean? Um, the few times when ghosts have been used successfully, it's when there are many battle cruisers or many carriers, and I don't feel like I can actually go toe-to-toe -to -toe with it in a straight fight by using Goliaths to kill the carriers, to, by using Goliaths to kill the battle cruisers, something like that. Um, and so players like Boxer have used a bunch of ghosts, surprise, done a bunch of lockdowns, and then killed everything off. Um, but even so, it's just very rare to ever see a ghost built because science vessels just do better. Um, in terms of cloak, in StarCraft 2, there are build orders where you get a ghost and then you go to the mineral line and you start picking things off. It just doesn't exist in this game because of the difficulty of teching to a ghost. Marines are built straight out of a barracks. Fire bats and medics require an academy, but the ghost, I kid you not, to build a ghost, you have to build a factory, you have to build a starport, and then you have to build a science facility. And then when the science facility is done, you have to build a covert ops. And when the covert ops is done, now you may begin building a ghost. But if you want to build a nuke, you have to build a command center. Even takes a while with cheat codes on. Then you got to throw down a nuke. And then you can build a nuke silo, which takes a very long time and also eats up 8 supply. Now, now we can nuke. Now the one big difference between nukes in this game and nukes in StarCraft 2 is that nukes in this game are insane. And the red dot is the tiniest thing in the entire game. Look, you can't even see it. Like, I have to zoom in and it's still hard to see. But when it lands, it deals something insane, like 500, like, pure damage to everything in, like, a huge area. 
But it looks like our zealots lived through it. Listen, don't nuke, okay? Don't nuke. Am I really gonna lose? You know what? We're just gonna restart so that way we can rebuild. <laughs> Let's start with that cheat code on. We lost to the computer. It's fucking sad with cheat codes on. Oh my god, I don't believe it. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, there, there's really only um, one place where you'd really get nukes, which is occasionally in Terran vs. Terran. There will be a line of tanks, and it's very hard to break through it. So you can throw a nuke down to force them to unsiege and back up. But you know what? Don't build this unit, build dropships instead. So really not very used. So we spent some time talking about these barracks units. This is a core unit against Zerg. This is a core unit against Zerg, and fire bats are, are situational, but still very important against Zerg. For the most part, no barracks units are made in the other matchups. Let's talk about the tank. The big-ass, badass tank. This is the unit in Terran. This is the unit. Not, not even in any specific matchup. This is the unit for the whole race. You gotta understand tanks. We're gonna spend a nice chunk of time talking about tanks right now. Built against Zerg, built against Terran, built against Protoss. And Terran Protoss, this is the main, the main ass unit. This is the main ass unit right here. I'm gonna start by talking about tanks against Zerg. So. Very important thing to note about tanks against Zerg. They really suck even in mid-sized Terran armies. I should say, there's small, look, just imagine small army, medium army, large army, like tanks, you need quite a healthy mid-sized army to be okay, and anything less than that, they actually kind of suck. The reason being, if we have this type of army, and I, I, I Imagine these these counts being quite exact, right? Imagine if we had... Not you, you, you get the hell out of here. If you have an army that's this sized, where you have a handful of infantry, is it better to add on three more marines or one more tank? If these are the exact sizes, 100% it's better to add the infantry in because if you have this small tank here, Zerglings are going to be able to walk right up and surround it, and the Zerglings won't be dead yet. So, generally, if you're against Zerg, you want, like, two control groups of Marines for your tanks to be effective. Now, you can do something like start tank production early, so that way, later on down the line, you will have a lot of tanks for your big fight. But don't think for a second that, like, you know, a control group of infantry plus tanks is good at all. It's easy for Zerg to kill that shit off simply by wandering the Zerglings close to the tank and then absorbing the splash damage. And I realize that for a lot of people, you might not even understand the basics of how the tank works. Tanks have quite a lot of health, 150. They start with an armor, which is great. And when they're siege, they deal 70 damage. 70 damage. You'll notice Marines have 40 health. But pretty much all big ranged units deal half damage to small units. So, still a shitload. It's at 5. And it does splash damage. So all these guys that were nearby are either taking full or half damage. Tanks are very scary when you get a lot of them sieged up together. Because as many of you know, the pathing in Brood War is very clunky. Units take a while to get from A to B, and if there's anything in the way blocking, they'll tend to just have pathing errors. So if you have a whole bunch of siege tanks, and then an army wanders forward, you can blow it up before it even gets to the siege tank. I realize I was speaking in way more advanced, like, here's how the matchup functions terms, but like... This is why people love siege tanks in general, is because just like one shot from a handful of them wipes entire armies before they get anywhere close. And now that I've made that statement, 
they wipe armies before you get anywhere close. This explains part of what I was just saying to you, man. If you have a small amount of infantry, Zerg armies will still be able to get close. Because if you have a lot of Zerglings and just some infantry, the Zerglings will waltz up to the tank. Zerglings are so, 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 so fast. So damn fast. So, by the way, look at this. Look at this. Look at this puny mortal trying to approach. Now, one thing that is important to note is that siege tanks deal friendly fire damage to your own units. So see how my marines are taking some damage? You see how this tank died? That's a good way to respond to it. That's a good way to counter the tank, is just to get on top of it. Um, so you'll see tanks built in two ways, um, if you're against a Zerg player. You'll see them built in support of big marine armies. And I want you to focus on that word, support. They are a support unit for marines. Or, if a Terran player is going for a mech composition, which would be lots of vultures and tanks and goliaths, but primarily vultures and tanks. Tanks are good if there's a shitload of vultures that have set up mines, and now the tanks actually have room to deal the damage. But other than that, that that's the way that tanks are used against Zerg, is a support for marines or because they're behind a whole bunch of mines with vultures. Um, other things that are really important to note about tanks, just generally good practices with tanks, don't siege up like this. Don't do this. Actually take some time to spread your stuff out. So you might want to do something like this when your army's moving forward. You might want to siege up chunks at a time. Spread your dudes out. Siege up the other ones move out like this, and then maybe you think to yourself, I want to move down this ramp. Unsiege the ones in the back, and then move them forward. Where each individual tank is placed is very, very important. For instance, this tank, if I'm moving down this ramp, this tank isn't doing anything. This tank back here, this tank isn't doing anything. These tanks are okay. Siege tank range is about a screen's distance. A little longer, actually. So putting tanks, like, out here is great. And now you can continue to leapfrog your tanks down like this. Now, part of the reason this is important is to avoid splash damage, but also it's really important if there is an army stampeding its way up here that they can't just do one big play to one clump of tanks. Tanks just keep going back. They just keep on going back. I'm going to find this computer opponent and kill him off so I can keep doing that show, man. So having these nice sort of spread lines of tanks is really nice. Now, against Protoss, everything I just said is like super key against Protoss as well. Um, against Protoss, tanks are pretty much your core unit. They're the big unit. They're the damage dealer. They're the big pusher. And a lot of the ways that you'll use tanks, and it's almost hard to talk about the tank in pure isolation because it winds up getting paired with vultures. We'll see that in just a moment. One of the big ways that tanks work is by sieging up just outside of a position and then inching in. So, one thing to note is that tanks, when they're unseaged, deal an okay amount of damage. They deal 30 damage. They're doing okay. They're not useless when unseaged, as a lurker is useless when it's unburrowed. But, you really want them to be sieged up. Now, imagine for a moment that this is a Protoss expansion. Imagine there's some Protoss scum here who's taking a base. How should you move up with your tanks? Here's the bad way. This is actually true for every single matchup. Walking up like that. This is terrible. This is really bad. You are vulnerable while you're walking. Don't do this. Don't do this at all. What you want to do is walk back here and siege up out here. Maybe get some good positions on the sides over here. Alright, I put that in a bad position. No rush. Move it up here. 
and do something like this. This is great. Look, we can still hit the expansion, we can still see it, and we have all these other guys right here. If Dragoons want to come up and try to pick this off, I'm going to get mowed down. I'm in single player. It just closed the whole game. My god. My god, I guess I shouldn't have called Protoss players scum. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. Oh well. Oh my god. My god, I can't believe this. Alright, well let's just let's just go here. Uh well gosh, I'm gonna have to play a custom game. I'm gonna have to go to my I'm gonna have to go to my download. I'm gonna have to go to Fighting Spirit. I'm gonna have to put Terran back here. I don't I don't believe it. Let's be up against some Protoss scum again. Alright. Great. So the tank against Protoss is really your really big, big, big damage dealing unit. Now an important thing to note about the tank is that the tank is really great at dealing damage, but it just they just suck by themselves. I want you to just get this in your head right now. Tanks kind of suck when they're just alone. So make sure you have support units. Um, I've talked a little bit about Terran vs. Protoss, how the tank is really your big unit. Um, I just want to note something that against Terran, a lot of what happens with tanks is that they wind up doing amazing things in terms of getting big tank lines. So what you'll often see is in Terran vs. Protoss, you might see things like this, where your tanks are kind of spread out in this sort of formation. But in Terran vs. Terran, it's very often a literal line, like this, where your siege tanks, sieged up, are trying to be at a complete line. Because just as I talked about, Vulture Tank is really the mixture to build in Terran versus Protoss. Tank Goliath is the mixture to build against Terran. These are the big um, compositions. And so with something like this, Tanks Against Tanks, you want it to be that the instant they walk a tank into range of your tanks, all your tanks fire. A big way to exploit weaknesses, let's say that here is a tank line in Terran versus Terran. Let's say our Terran opponent has his tanks here. Imagine again, these are enemy tanks, enemy tanks, enemy tanks. A great way to assault this is by going to the point. The point of this tank line. So sieging up like this in order to take this enemy tank down because then he only shoots once and I one shot him. So this is the tank. To recap against Zerg, the tank is good as a unit that supports marines but make sure you kind of have like two dozen or so marine medic. Tanks really suck by themselves. Against Protoss, they're like your core unit, uh, often supported by vultures, and you want to make sure that you are not sieging in clumps, that you're kind of spreading out, that you have the mines protecting them. And then in Terran versus Terran, tanks are really key at building lines so that you can expand behind. So that's just a little bit about each of the three matchups as they relate to the tank. And I want to talk about the way that tanks are good at defending expansions. Tanks are really great at being in cute positions, such as one up here. Almost every Terran player, whenever they look at a map, they say, where the hell can I place tanks in order to be obnoxious and exploitive? Here's a good spot for a tank right up here, backed up by, say, two down here. Awesome. This is beautiful. Now, don't just march and siege tanks up in a spot. Tanks benefit hugely from terrain. They don't need terrain, but they benefit super, super huge. Like, this tank is almost invincible. Um, so when you're uh, taking expansions, 
make sure your tanks are in good position. One of the best ways to support tanks is to make buildings in big walls around on the map like this. So maybe here, since it's the entrance to your base, you land your starting barracks here. And then since you wanted an engineering bay in that game, you build that anyways. Great. Now it's really hard to get to the tanks. Why is this good? Because tanks are not good by themselves. They need marines to support them. They need vultures with mines to support them. Or here they're using buildings to support them. Cool. Uh, was there... I think there was one more thing I wanted to say about the tank. Uh, that's fine. Let's move on to the vulture. Now the vulture is a, is a really weird unit. Because it is not necessarily the big damage dealer that the tank is. But I'll still just claim that the Vulture is probably the most powerful unit in the game. Probably the most powerful unit in the game. So just looking at its cost, it's 75 minerals. Part of the reason why Siege Tank Vulture is such a good combination is because it just works monetarily. You spend all your gas on the tanks, and with your extra minerals, you're building some Vultures. And Vultures have 80 health, so they cost a little bit more than a Marine, but they have twice as much health as a Marine. The big difference is that the Frag Grenade that the Terran uh, Vulture has deals 20 damage, but again, it's a concussive damage type. Nice. It's a concussive damage type, which means against workers and small things, it deals its full 20 damage. Which makes vultures amazing against workers. I built three because often you'll have a player who just comes up and just one shots. And they're gone. Particularly against Protoss, this happens a lot. So vultures really are the big worker killer. Once again, notice this has 750 out of 750 health. I attack it once. It's only received a little over. No, excuse me, it's only received four damage. Because. Instead of dealing 20 damage, it dealt 25% of that. It dealt 5 damage. And then because machine shops have 1 armor, it only dealt 4. So vultures really suck against buildings. They're not very good against things that are armored, like dragoons or other tanks. I mean, this is going to take quite some time. Oof. You can imagine this tank just turning. Look at this. It's just going to get 4-shotted like no problem. Still at a third health. So Vultures are one of these units that, just in terms of its basic attack, is very good against workers, very good against small things like Zealots and Zerglings, not just for the damage that they're dealing, but also because of this speed. Holy shit, this is the fastest unit in the game. So ridiculously, insanely fast. But they really suck against mechanical units. Now, I haven't even talked to you about why I think that the Vulture is perhaps the most powerful unit in the game. It's this Spider Mine right here, man. Spider Mines deal 125 damage. And you get three of them. Oh! That's so good! That's so insane, man! So, what if I am up against a tank that kills my vultures very, very quickly? How would I go up against it? Well, I just run up and I plant a bunch of mines around and then I run away. And they'll blow this enemy tank up or this enemy dragoon up. So that is part of what makes vultures so scary, is that they can just move at the speed of light, wander right up to your face, plant mines right in front of you, and then back off again. Now in terms of some of the ways that vultures are used, I'm going to go ahead and chuck these guys out of the way. Just so I can make myself a little troop. The way that vultures work both against Protoss and Terran is that they're very good at just sort of saying, no, you don't get to be here. Just sort of carving out space for yourself on the map. So, you know, if you're a new player, you might want to just plant a bunch of mines down at the front of your base. Just find to plant a few. 
But the big thing that vultures are good at is doing something like this. Moving out on the minimap and planting some mines over here. Come on, guys. Plant your damn mines. Oh, I'm, I'm hitting the wrong button. Excuse me. They're very good at doing something like this. Building these mines this way. Cool. And now you might say, okay, Protoss can't move in here. And then, once you've laid those mines down, you can go down to this side and maybe attack an expansion here. Another thing that's really common, let's say that Protoss does have an expansion here. You run up and you plant mines wherever they would be reinforcing. So you would plant them up here on this ledge and then go to town on the probes. So that way he has to walk through the mines. Things like this will often get cleared up, but are huge at delaying your opponent. So, to talk a little bit about Terran vs. Protoss and Terran vs. Zerg, Terran vs. Protoss will often just be able to clear this off with Dragoons and Observers. You have to be a little careful because Vultures just have three mines, and once they're out, they're out. You just don't have any more mines. So you don't want to be too frivolous spamming your mines down, because a Dragoon and an Observer will just eventually walk through. It's still very important to do this a lot as a Terran player, just to get a sense of where the Dragoons are and to kind of keep him held back. You can also do things like, you know, scout expansions with the mines. Against Terran, however, Terran does not have good detectors in the early game. Just Comsat scan. So in Terran vs. Terran, the Vulture is one of the shittiest units in terms of direct fights. Siege tanks own Vultures, Goliaths own Vultures, everything owns Vultures. Vultures do nothing but die against other Terran units. But they can plant a lot of mines and then it makes it kind of a nightmare if you're the opponent to try to push out of here. That is a great clarification by Asian Mexican in the chat. It says mines don't attack workers, right? That's correct. Also, vultures do not set off mines. This is a slightly uh, more nuanced thing, but some units, any unit that you see kind of have an acceleration and a deceleration, like you can see this as he's wiggling around, sort of speeds up. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, and then he slows down. Any unit that has a speed up or slow down is what's called a hovering unit. Hovering units don't set off mines. So other hovering units include workers. Go, See so he speeds up, and then he slows down, speeds up. This is different from a tank that's either moving or not. Notice how it's not moving while it rotates. Archons are hovering, workers are hovering. I think those are it. I think those are it. Okay. So vultures are really important in Terran vs. Protoss and Terran vs. Terran for doing stuff like this, planting mines down in front. Mines are great against zealots, amazing against zealots. Mines are pretty good against dragoons, but most of the time the dragoons will just take it out anyways. The most scary, terrifying thing that you mustn't do, that you mustn't ever do, you simply mustn't do this. You are a Terran player pushing to the right. There's a bunch of mines over here, and the Protoss retreats, and you go, great. You unsiege, and then siege right on top of your own mines. Mines deal friendly fire damage. So if one of these blows up, you're going to lose all your tanks in one shot. There are more big mine explosion clips for Brood War than anything else. So if you want to do this, just kill this off. And then move forward. That's okay to do. That's okay to do. That's okay to do. So, last unit, the Goliath. The Goliath is a surprisingly well-rounded unit. It has pretty good amount of health, 125. 
it does 12 damage to ground, which is like two marines worth of damage. And it costs about two marines plus a little bit of gas. Um, comes with some armor. The big thing is that it has an extraordinarily powerful long range attack. I can't believe I still know all these cheat codes, man. Do you really want me to build an armory? So, flying things, Goliaths shoot from, like, infinity range away. I mean, look at how huge this range is. It's a screen. It is a screen's worth of range. It also deals a huge amount of damage. It deals 20 damage per missile. Or I should say per shot. So, um, this again is the explosive damage type, which means it deals full damage to large things, but less damage to smaller things like mutalisks. But for the most part, Goliaths are just sick against air, and because they're well-rounded, they move quite quickly. Not super quickly, but they're pretty fast. In Terran versus Terran, they're a nice unit to support the tank that is not the, the shitty, terrible vulture. Are we having some struggles here? Oh no, is power overwhelming? Working good? Nice. I love having cheat codes on. And to understand why Goliaths are built in Terran vs. Terran, I'm going to come back to them. We have to come back to them. Um, I'll just note, Goliaths never really built against Protoss unless Protoss is building carriers. If the Protoss is not building carriers, you don't build Goliaths almost at all. You might build like two or three in the early and mid game just to shoot down some observers, just to shoot down a shuttle. But you don't really build them against Protoss. If you start to see the Protoss going carriers, you switch out all your production of Tank Vulture right on over to Tank Goliath. So what you'll often see uh, Terran players do is they'll research the range upgrade, but then still really not build that many Goliaths. Even in the ultra late game where there's Arbiters and Zealots and Dragoons and all these sorts of things, it's like four Goliaths. So generally against Protoss, hardly any. Against Zerg, zero if you're going for Marines. You just don't build Goliaths if you're building Marines. Marines are already good enough. Um, um, for... If you're going for a mech composition, which is no Marines, you have to build a good amount of Goliaths as Terran. Otherwise, you have no anti-air. Yes, and against Terran, I'm going to come back to it. Against Terran, I'm going to come back to it. All right, the Wraith. Wraiths are weird units. Wraiths are super fast, very mobile. They have the ability to cloak and become invisible, which makes them very annoying early game for harassing. The cloak does take energy. They have great anti-air, 20 damage. It's about as good as Goliaths are at anti-air. It's about as good as Goliaths, except the range damage sucks. So, look at how slow this attack is. Totally uninspiring. Goliath's attack went faster, like. You can just clearly see. So Goliaths are dealing more damage and the same amount of anti-air, and Wraiths are dealing not so much damage. But the big advantage that Wraiths do have is that they are incredibly annoying early game in terms of harassment. Especially if you get a few of them together and you wind up flying around in one of these sort of like small death squads where you can just get them all clustered together and just start chipping away at workers like this. Now I'm going to talk about the Wraith a little differently than the other units. Oh, there's our computer player wanting to mess with me, man. Wraiths? First, we're going to talk about early game. Against Protoss, basically never build. Except if, for some reason, you went one factory, one starport, and your opponent has built a shuttle. If those situations are true... <laughs> How does this happen to me? By the way, the reason my stuff's dying is friendly fire. So brutal. 
This is this is the most brutal thing I've ever seen. Come on, guys. Just could you just one A and let me stay alive for once? So against Protosses, you only really want to get one Wraith to shoot down the shuttle with the Reaver, but that's it. You don't ever really build this unit against Protoss in the early game otherwise. Against Zerg, there are builds where you get two Starports, lots of Wraiths, and you run around shooting Overlords and trying to kill drones. That's a very technical play. You don't really need to do that if you're Terran, but if you're Zerg, you're going to have to build some Hydralisks and be very careful with your Overlords in order to stay alive. Um, and against other Terran players, occasionally you'll see people do Wraith harassment in the early game just because there's such little anti-air that Terran has other than the Goliath. So even though Wraiths are unimaginably shitty at killing workers, I mean, this is so slow. You can sometimes force some Goliaths and force some detection because you're invisible. And that's enough to disrupt the enemy. But Wraiths are not like a big scary power unit for Terran in the early game. Now, late game, never build them against Zerg. Late game against Protoss, you can build them against carriers. This is a common play to do. Like Goliaths, ooh, I'm having a hard time killing off carriers. Well, what you can do is you can just do a scan, shoot the Observer, cloak, and then kill all the carriers. That's the only time you'll ever see Wraiths built late game. Um, and against in Terran versus Terran, sometimes, I almost don't even want to go into it because it's just so weird. In late game, Terran vs. Terran, sometimes Terran players are building battlecruisers, and wraiths can be a nice way to shoot down the battlecruisers, because wraiths just have such good anti-air. Wraiths suck in all other circumstances, though. Also in late game, Terran vs. Terran, if you both have a shitload of bases, you can sometimes just build, like, 25 wraiths, like, a ton, because even though they're super, super bad, they're very, 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 very mobile. So you can just dart in, pick off one tank, pull away, dart in, pick off something else, pull away. And even though pound for pound these units suck, they're so fast and nimble that they're giving you an edge. Uh, but I wouldn't worry too much about that. I wouldn't worry too much about that. Um, next unit, the dropship. This is, this is a pretty intuitive thing. If you're Zer against Zerg as Terran, you're sometimes going to load up some Marines and a Medic. And then drop them to uh, kill off some workers. If you're against a Protoss, you're going to load in some Vultures. And they're going to drop them to kill off some workers. The only thing that's really weird is Terran versus Terran. Where you see mass dropships. Why? Well, imagine you're in the following situation. There is a Terran player here who has a line of siege tanks. You can't walk up to this with a ground army without losing everything. So what you do is you load your whole ground army into these goliaths, and then or into these dropships, and then you just drop all of them directly onto the tanks. Just drop, 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 drop. And then you get to kill off all the tanks. Or similarly... If you are up against a Terran expansion up in a corner, let's suppose that there is a Terran who's built an expansion here and, say, has some tanks over here. You know what's a good way to pick it off? Well, you just walk your whole army up here, and then you come in at this hard angle. Oh my god, I used my StarCraft 2 hotkeys. Oh my god, I'm so embarrassed. Oh my god, you guys. Uh, you just walk your whole army in, and you unload everything right here. On top of those tanks. I know, I was, I was, I was hitting D, I was hitting D, isn't that sick? I'm even going to repeat this again because I'm just I'm just in such despair that I hit the wrong button. If Terran has an expansion here and there's siege tanks, so you don't seem to be able to pierce it. 
you can just wander your whole forces up here. And then just siege up comfortably. Kill off everything here, and now you kind of hold this territory. This is a lot about how Terran vs. Terran works in the mid and late game. You're just unloading huge armies of tanks in places to kind of hold that. Now, one of the big things that you'll notice is why are Goliaths built in such huge numbers? Well, because if you get a few Goliaths and there's dropships coming in, like this dropship that has some tanks in it, well, the Goliaths will just see it and they have insane air range and they can pick off the entire army before it even goes in. Kind of painful. So that's why tanks, Goliaths, and dropships are the big composition in Terran vs. Terran, for that reason. Um, Alright. Valkyrie. We're going to the Valkyrie next. Valkyries are um, only used in really two situations. And both of them are support situations. Valkyries are good support for Goliaths. If there are a lot of mutalisks. Valkyries are not good against mutalisks alone. They die really easily to pure mutalisks if you have pure Valkyries. Valkyries are a support unit. Because they just die so fast. They are also used in these fringe Terran vs. Terran situations. Where there's a whole bunch of wraiths. And you have a whole bunch of wraiths, and you also put in three or four Valkyries to help win those wraith fights. That's it. That's it. Done. Only situations with Valkyrie. Very fringe, rarely used units. Um, Science Vessel. Oh, love this unit so much. This is one of the best units in all of Terran, man. So first of all, what... What this literally does, it has pretty good health for a spellcaster. It has 200. It flies. It's a detector. It's the most significant detection that you have. But first, there is Defensive Matrix, which puts this extremely strong shield. I think it's something like 260 health that it absorbs. It lets a little bit of damage through, but for the most part, it absorbed like five volleys of Goliath's worth of damage. It's really nice. So some of the uses that you'll see out of this is really clutch um, ramp blocking play. Come here, Marine. Well, oh, whatever. Pretend this is a Marine. If there are Zerglings and Ultralists trying to move up a ramp, sometimes you'll just defensive matrix a single unit like a Medic, a Marine, in this case a Goliath. And then it's very hard for Zerg to kill this and break through. This is the most important use for Defensive Matrix, is protecting the front point unit. Similarly, if we have a whole bunch of tanks that are out here, if this one is sieged up and then we have some more that are sieged up behind, if the attack's coming from below, you Defensive Matrix this bottom one to just let all these guys in the back deal more damage. Now, Irradiate is a super interesting ability. Irradiate is the main use against a Zerg. It slowly deals damage to the unit for a grand total of 300 damage or until the unit dies. Any other unit that is nearby that unit also takes damage from the Radiate. So you'll note that both my Marines are going to die at the same time. So the big targets for Irradiate tend to be things like a Mutalisk in a pack of Mutalisks, because it's dealing area damage to all of them. Or a Lurker, a big expensive gas unit, or a Defiler, because it just guaranteed it's going to kill them in a little bit. Also... Nice against Ultralisks. Nice to kind of, you know, squishy him up. And against Zerg, you're building a lot of these. Often you'll get two star ports constantly producing science vessels just so you can irradiate every single unit that they have. Um, the last ability, which is EMP, just kills all the energy 
on units. So for instance, this has 200 energy. EMP will kill that, bring it down to zero. Also against Protoss, it eliminates all shields. So, you some use the EMP to kill shields, but the area is not actually huge. Like to here, it didn't even get EMP'd. Do you see that? Like, this is not a, a large distance. Like, if I get a little closer, then it gets it. But I mean, this is about the distance. So it's, it's really not a significant ability to use um, for shields. The primary use of it is if, against Protoss, there's Arbiters moving in. You use it for the detection, and then you aim an EMP and remove all the energy from the Wraith. So, against Protoss, you're largely using this for the detection against the Arbiters and to EMP incoming Arbiters, and occasionally EMP um, High Templar, but not really as much for the shields. Last but not least, the big daddy unit, Battle Cruiser Operation. Not built against Protoss, period. Not built. But it is built very frequently in Terran vs. Terran. If I have half the map and you have half the map, well, I guess I'll just dump all my money into Battle Cruisers. Really great unit for advancing forward because you can Yamato cannon enemy tanks. It one-shots them, and then it lets you slowly advance forward in a siege line. Um, against Zerg, infrequently they're built, but don't even worry about it. That's like an advanced-ass strategy that, you know, again, is another, like, half math split. May as well incorporate some battle cruisers in. But for the most part, it's really a Terran vs. Terran tool, period. So I just want to recap um, the really big important concepts that we talked about in this because really my goal is to get you attuned to what units you need to think about. If you're Terran against Zerg, you're building lots of marines and medics and supporting them with tanks and science vessels. In order of importance, marines and medics, number one, science vessels, number two, tanks, number three. And I don't mean first build the marines, second build the vessels, third build the tanks. I'm just talking about what are the what's the scary and the big thing. So, uh, lots of medic marine, a good amount of science vessels, and some tanks. In a later section, we'll talk about mech versus zerg, but occasionally you'll see against zerg, tanks, goliaths, and vultures. It's also having some popularity as a transition, but we're not even talking about transition, we're just talking about units. Are we serious with this shit right now? We'll be doing Protoss in a moment. Nah. I can't believe this is this is so ridiculous, man. Can a guy just do a show? Can a guy do a show? Look at this. He literally has disruption webbed everything I have. This is so ridiculous. And if you don't know what disruption web does, don't worry, because we're doing Protoss next. We're saving the Zerg for the end. Again, in Terran versus Terran, it's tanks and goliaths are your main core army. Vultures can be used to do annoying things and plant lots of mines in the middle. And drop ships with your whole army in them are the common way to break positions. Um, and you'll occasionally transition to battle cruisers in the late game. And if you're a Terran against a Protoss, you are tanks and vultures all the way. Occasionally getting goliaths at the end for carriers and some anti-air. You're getting a lot, or you're getting a good amount of science vessels to deal with arbiters. Now, I, I want you to know that this review of these Terran units is pretty much focused on just giving you like an introduction to kind of the feel of them. Because if you're sitting down at Terran vs. Protoss, if you know all you have to do is tank Vulture, that's going to be way more helpful than if you're trying to think of when to go fire bats and when to go marines. Never, dude, never, never do those. Now you're gonna be fine. Um, you know a little bit about the compositions and hopefully you've learned a little bit about the qualities of the units. So now I'm going to take a short break because I've been talking continuously for an hour. And when I come back, we're going to do Protoss. We're gonna intro the Protoss units. So stay right there. I'll be back in like two minutes. <laughs> 